We say goodbye to big solar flare producer region 2403. We watch a huge coronal hole form in the northern part of the sun. And effects from a better late than never solar storm that we had just this past week lands two of our Aurora field reporters in the headlines of the Washington Post and the BBC. That's in the news this week. Hi, I'm Tam with the Scove, and the sun this week is kind of settling down from last week's festivities. We no longer have any big M flare producers as that huge region has now rotated off out of sight off of the west limb. But we have had some beautiful prominence eruptions, as you can see, in the northwest and also in the southeast, and we're watching the southeast region quite closely. On top of that, we've also had this gorgeous coronal hole that has opened up. It started as part of a failed uh, filament eruption, but then you can just see this area begin to kind of evacuate and just and suck off and amazingly we get this huge coronal hole that we're now staring at and what's interesting about that is that it begins to reach down into this region over here which is adjacent to another filament so we're watching this area quite closely to see whether or not we might get yet another solar storm launch in the next few days Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we definitely have been declining since region 2403 has rotated out of sight. In fact, the last M class flare we had was back on August 30th. We did get a little bit of a bump uh, on August 31st, but it was only about a C class flare and things continued to trend down. So you amateur radio operators, uh, rest easy because it doesn't look like there's another M flare player in sight for easily the next week or so. Switching to our solar storm conditions, we got absolutely hammered this past week. This was due to a set of solar storms that went back to back and it was followed by some high speed wind. It all started around the 26th and then we jumped up to moderate storm levels for absolutely days. And the only reason why the storm levels weren't even higher than this was because these storms were actually very slow. Otherwise we would have had even more intense storming than we had. Things finally settled down right around the 29th and into the 30th and since then things have been pretty quiet although we are anticipating some more fast wind that should be coming here and hitting us within the next few days or so. So the highlights of the aurora this week come from Jake Stelly of Wisconsin, whose amazing photos landed him in the Washington Post, and also Karen Monroe of North Scotland, whose time lapse from her living room ended up making the headlines on BBC News. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see is region 2396 right there is rotated onto the east limb. It's now in Earth view. But do you notice just beneath that coronal hole there are a couple filaments there. One of them, the southernmost one, has erupted. And we're seeing some activity there even as they rotate into Earth view. That's what's happening on the southeast limb right now. So we're watching that activity. Outside of that, the sun is pretty bland. There's not a lot going on. So we're going to be looking for this activity. But outside of that, we're probably going to take a break. And we don't see any M flare players in our near future. Returning to the disk, you can see Monster Region 2403 is now rotating off of the west limb. It is now out of view, so we no longer have a big uh, risk for M-class flares or any particle radiation storms. Meanwhile, the rest of the regions on the disk and the ones that are coming on from the backside are really small and they don't seem to be growing very quickly. So none of them seem to be a risk for M-class flares at this time, and we probably won't see anything like that easily for the next week or so. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the impact of that high speed stream. So NOAA is giving us about a 40% chance of a major storm at high latitudes over the next few days or so. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting about a 10% chance for a minor storm. But these streams have been a little bit underwhelming as of late. So it may not last for that very long and it may not hit as hard as we think it might. Uh, but things will then after that should be calming down and returning to normal because we don't see any solar storms in our future. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, well, you can really tell when region 243 has rotated out of view because everything is in the green now. We have gone to basically no threat for an M-class flare or for a particle radiation storm. As a matter of fact, we actually might have a little bit of an issue for uh, radio propagation for you amateur radio operators because the fluxes are now so low. But hey, for you GPS operators, it's time to get your drones out because it looks like it's nothing but sunny weather, at least for the next week.
So this week looks like we're finally calming down a little bit. Outside of that high-speed stream that we're expecting in the next day or two, things are definitely going to be quieting down over this week. So you amateur radio operators, outside of having maybe some flux issues, you should be able to get back on the bands and start having some good times as opposed to the big radio blackouts that you were experiencing last week. And you Aurora photographers, after all of the storming that's been going on, rest. It is your time to rest. And way to go for you guys that got uh, some press uh, on both the BBC and Washington Post. Keep those Aurora photos coming and uh, stay diligent. All of you guys are space weather rock stars. I really love it. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.